Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if you're looking for a compact, powerful laptop that runs Linux out of the box, you have plenty of options. But this one has a better battery life than most. This is the KDE Slimbook, but the whole review, apart from the software-related stuff, will apply to its cousin, the Slimbook Pro X14 as well. It's Ryzen 7 powered, it's got great battery life, it's lightweight and sturdy, and it looks pretty damn cool, so let's take a look at what it can do. So, guess who noticed they forgot to record a sponsor segue while they were editing the video? Yeah, this guy. So, yeah, OnlyOffice. It's good. Thanks to OnlyOffice for sponsoring this video. OnlyOffice is the only Office suite I use on all my Linux PCs nowadays. It's open source, it's fast, it looks good, and it's super compatible with Microsoft Office formats. You can download it for free and run it locally on any computer, whatever the operating system, including Android and iOS. Or you can couple that with a free personal cloud that lets you edit online and can be connected to a lot of storage services you might already use, like Google Drive, Dropbox, Nextcloud, OneDrive, and a lot more. This personal cloud has received a big update recently with a dark theme, a free library of templates, it supports a ton more languages and it has a lot of hotkeys you can use to navigate on top of having an interface refresh. If you need a powerful, cloud-ready and compatible Office suite for Linux or any other operating system, I don't think you can do better than only Office. So head over to the link in the description below to download it or create your own personal cloud. Okay, just to get this out of the way, this video isn't sponsored by Slimbook, they didn't pay me anything, and I don't get to keep the laptop. It's just my review with my opinions. So, the general design is one I'm very well acquainted with, having daily driven the previous gen Slimbook Pro X14 for the better part of two years. It was my day-to-day -day laptop when I was working as a product owner. Now, the design here is virtually identical. You get a compact 14-inch laptop made out of a magnesium and aluminium alloy, which is very, very lightweight, as the whole laptop only weighs 1.1 kilograms. That's super easy to carry around without breaking your back. It's also pretty durable, as my own previous-gen Slimbook Pro X14 can attest. The palm rest shows no sign of wear after two years. The keys are all intact and the lettering doesn't fade. And it only picked up two small scratches after being lugged around every day in a bag without any protection. No dance, no damage, the hint hasn't slackened, it's really solid. Now this is a device that exhibits very minimal deck flex and it doesn't bend or creak. The major and only change to the design is the keyboard. It's now completely black instead of silver. This is just a looks change, but it's a welcome one. It's definitely inspired by the latest MacBook Pros from Apple, there's no denying that. But it's very stylish, and it also helps with backlight, as the previous silver keyboard didn't really make the keys that visible under certain angles. It's much better with the black keyboard. Apart from that, you have the same solid hinge that doesn't wobble, although you can't open it with one finger, the whole laptop will tip over. Bezels are pretty minimal around the screen, apart from the bottom one, which sports a Slimbook logo, and you also get a pretty big KDE logo on the lid of the laptop. On the regular Slimbook Pro X14, you'll get a Slimbook logo instead there. Although you can ask Slimbook to engrave anything you like on the lid of the laptop, they can do it. Now, you can, of course, open the laptop up and upgrade its RAM and storage with just a few screws, as these elements are not soldered. Another big change on the new iteration of the Slimbook Pro X14, or the KDE Slimbook, is the CPU, and it makes a big difference. Instead of the Ryzen 7 4800H that my own model uses, the new KDE Slimbook, or Slimbook Pro X14, runs a Ryzen 7 5700U, which is still 8 core and 16 threads, but is much more efficient battery-wise. We will see how much in the rest of the video. It also has Vega 8 graphics with a higher clock speed than the previous Vega 7 generation. It comes with 8GB of RAM and 250GB of SSD, but you can push that up to 64 gigs of RAM and 4TB of storage with two M.2 SSD modules. You also get a 14-inch 1080p display, which is enough on that form factor, as well as Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 and a 47 watt hour battery. In terms of I.O., it's the same selection as the previous model. On the left, you get the Kensington lock to secure your laptop to your desk, 
a gigabit Ethernet port, a USB A 3.1 port, a USB 2 port, and an audio jack. On the right, you have a barrel charger, an HDMI 2.0 port, another USB A 3.1, and a USB C port that supports display out and charging. It's weird to see a USB 2.0 port still in 2022. I would have expected them to move them all to USB 3 at least, and only having one USB C port doesn't seem super modern. There's no Thunderbolt because it's AMD and licensing problems, but yeah, the IO kind of feels a bit dated now. Let's switch things a little and go directly to the performance. The Ryzen 7 5700U has a base clock of 1.8 GHz and goes up to 4.3 while boosting. On Geekbench 5, it gets 1264 in single core and 6293 in multi core. This is similar to the previous Ryzen 7 4800H they used, at least in single core, but it is a bit weaker in multi core. What you lose in pure multi-core performance though, you make up in terms of graphics, as the Vega 8 graphics are just better than the previous Vega 7 with a higher clock speed. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I got between 25 and 35 FPS at 1080p resolution on low details. At 720p on low settings, you get a comfortable 35 to 40 FPS. So the CPU is a bit less powerful than the one they used previously, but the GPU is now faster, which means that you're basically getting the same performance as before, but as we're gonna see, you get a lot more battery life. It's still not a gaming device, but you're gonna be able to play indie titles and some older AAA titles on low details without too many problems. So, as I said, the main advantage of that lower-powered CPU is the battery life. With my previous Slimbook Pro X14, I got around 6 hours doing my day job, so Wi-Fi, Bluetooth on with a mouse connected, 50% brightness, and using a web browser with a bunch of tabs, plus GIMP, Inkscape, Only Office, and a bunch of small desktop apps. Now this new KD Slimbook model lasted for 7.5 hours of YouTube video playback over Wi-Fi at 50% brightness, and with a more realistic workload, I could squeeze 9 hours of battery life. So I think it was really worth it to switch the previous H-Line CPUs to the new U-Line CPUs, which are way more battery efficient. You don't really lose any power, but you gain about 2 to 3 hours of battery life, which is like really what you need on a laptop. In terms of temperatures, at idle it's around 48 degrees Celsius, and under load, like when playing Tomb Raider, I never saw it going higher than 63 degrees. The chassis seems super well ventilated, it doesn't get burning hot either, and I have never heard the fan running, even when playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider at max details and max resolution. The game wasn't playable, but the laptop didn't make any noise. Now, let's move on to the audio and video stuff. And no improvements here, compared to the previous model, unfortunately. The webcam is still the same 720p potato cam, and it can't handle strong lights or low light situations. The microphone is not great either, pretty tinny and muffled, and it picks up on key presses, on fan noise, and on touchpad clicks, which, uh, yeah, not great. As per the speakers, they are decent, not saturating, they get pretty loud, they don't sound tinny, and they have some amount of bass. They are good enough for listening to music, watching a TV show, a movie, or your favorite YouTuber. Is it me? Please say it's me. Okay, fine. All in all, it's disappointing to not see any improvements on that front. Like, they could have at least boosted the webcam to 1080p, like the one they use on the Slimbook Executive 16. It uses the same bezel space and the same width, so there is no reason to not replace it with something better. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing. The display, on the other hand, is still good. It might only be 1080p, but on a 14-inch laptop, 1440p is unusable, and going 4K with 2x scaling would just destroy the battery life for no reason. It's a small screen, you can't really see the pixels at 1080p. It's also 60Hz and 16x9. And okay, okay, you can now all say that 16x10 is mandatory, which I kinda agree on these days, honestly. Like, 16x10 is good. The display still covers 100% of sRGB, it's 350 nits, it's got an anti-glare coating, 
And it's good. Viewing angles are good, color accuracy is great, it's responsive, and it gets bright enough to be used outdoors. The bezels are also pretty thin, apart from the bottom one. In terms of input devices, nothing has really changed apart from the color of the keyboard. This keyboard was already great on the previous model, and it hasn't changed here. It's got wide, large keys, which I like, a Plasma Logo Super Key, although you will get a Slimbook logo on the Pro X14 instead. And typing on that keyboard just feels good. The keys are stable, they will register a key press even on their very sides, and the sound is nice and clicky. Key travel is long enough, and the keys bounce back quickly with a nice soft stop at the end of the press. It's a very good keyboard. And in black, it looks amazing, especially considering that it now makes the backlight a lot more visible than with the previous silver keyboard, which basically, if you were at an angle, you could not see anything on the keys and you just couldn't really use the keyboard. As per the touchpad, it's nice to use. It's smooth, it's big enough, and it's responsive. It works for gestures without any issues, it has good palm rejection, and it's precise. I liked it on my own Pro X14, and I still like it now. It's not the best touchpad I ever used, but it does its job. Although I realize I have been spoiled by the gigantic touchpad on the Slimbook Executive 16. Like this glass surface, this nice soft click. Yeah, nothing really compares in what I've used. Now let's talk software. While the Slimbook Pro X14 can come with a bunch of distros, or you can install your own, the KDE Slimbook comes with KDE Neon. Now, it's a distro I really like, and it showcases KDE very well, and it will also deliver all timely updates to the DE and its apps. It's basically the best KDE experience you can get if you want to use vanilla KDE. But it also means that the KDE Slimbook doesn't come out of the box with the few nice utilities that Slimbook has. You don't get Slimbook Face to make use of the infrared camera to unlock the laptop and avoid entering passwords. You don't get Slimbook Battery to fine-tune your battery and power-saving mode, or their AMD controller, which also lets you switch the CPU frequency and sync it with Slimbook Battery. Now, Slimbook has a PPA that lets you install these after the fact, so you're not really missing out on much. You can also add all of that later. And the absence of these tools is on purpose. The KDE team specifically wants people to interact with KDE Neon as it was designed to be used. They don't want to add anything else. But it also means that out of the box, some features of your laptop aren't going to be able to be used. But it also means that if you install a battery controller like Slimbook Battery, you might be able to squeeze more than the nine hours of battery life that I got. So the KDE Slimbook and the Slimbook Pro X14 new generation. It's basically the same chassis, the same strength and the same weaknesses. The big change is the black keyboard, which is a good one, especially if you use your laptop in the dark and the CPU, which loses you a teeny tiny bit of base clock speed in exchange for more battery life and better graphics. It's a trade-off that really works, because you cannot tell the difference in day-to-day -day use between the 4800H and the 5700U. It's basically the same experience, but you get three hours more of battery life. Now, I wish they had upgraded the webcam and the mic, because they're still pretty bad and the I.O. might have benefited from a second USB-C port instead of the USB 2 one. But the rest of the device is really good. It starts at 949 euros, all taxes included, and whether you prefer the KDE variant, that will also give KDE devs a share of the revenue, or the regular Pro X14 non-KDE version, that's up to you. Now for that price, I wish they included 16 gigs of RAM and 500 gigs of SSD instead of the 8 and 250 it starts with. But hey, if you want to help support the KDE dev team, and if you want to help support Slimbook, which is a company that contributes to Linux development and Linux hardware support, I guess that's the price. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to help support the channel, you can become a Patreon subscriber or a YouTube member. Both get access to a weekly podcast every Monday and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover at the end of each month. And if you just want to donate, there's a super thanks button underneath the video and a PayPal link in the description. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!